All right. My name is Todd from Co2 Cards, and today we are talking about Quarter Century Bonanza with the question, should you buy the sealed or should you pass and just buy the singles? That's what we're looking at today, but we also have an amazing giveaway on this channel, on this video. We are giving away one secret rare SP Little Knight as well as one secret rare totally awesome and the reason we're giving away a totally awesome is because it's one of my favorite cards it is my favorite card in this set and when we open up the case on the channel the card that we are chasing is a quarter century totally awesome that is what we are after so um all you got to do to be eligible for the giveaway is be subscribed to the channel or subscribe right now and leave a comment. That is it. The thumbs up like button does help us out tremendously if you wouldn't mind hitting that. And if you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button right now. All right. So I'm going to jump over. I'm going to start breaking this down. Just, just real quick. Did anybody else think that the name for this set quarter century bonanza was just kind of like a placeholder initially like they didn't know what to name it when they revealed it so they just kind of gave it that name and they were going to give it something much cooler later on and they never did and like i i i hate saying this name i hate the word bonanza I, I just do not like the name of this set, Quarter Century Bonanza. It's like that they ran out of ideas. It's completely cheesy. They could have just called it Rarity Collection 3. That's what it is. Anyways, that's my rant. I'm done with that. All right, so should you buy this product or should you just buy the singles? I think this is a pretty easy one. Um, and I think the more interesting question is on pre-sales. And we're going to talk about that a little bit on this video. And then I'm going to do a video on pre-sales, hopefully tomorrow or Sunday. That video will come out, but I'm really hoping for tomorrow to get that video out on pre-sales. But should you buy the sealed or just buy the singles? Pretty easy on this set. I think you should pass on this set. And I think that you should buy the singles. I think about 80% of the community does not need to buy these boxes. You just buy the singles. That's the smart move on this set. I'll break down why it is in a moment. But look, there are, you know, I say 80% because I leave room for 20%. 20% to buy the product. And that 20% are people who, first of all, just love opening up sealed product. Um, find tremendous value in the fun of opening up sealed product. Love supporting their local uh, OTS stores. Those people, yeah, go in, buy it have fun it's going to be a lot of fun to open up you're gonna enjoy it immensely um it's it's a really cool fun product but 80 percent of us at least should be passing on buying the sealed and we should just be buying the singles so let me break down why that's the case look there's two different sets in here there's a nostalgia pole which is like 200 cards and then there's a more meta relevant pole which is somewhere like 80 eight, somewhere around 80 cards um so if you're after the nostalgia cards you should definitely just be buying the singles because there's 200 of these suckers in here and when there's 200 in here, the chances of you getting the cards you want are pretty slim. I think probably, you know, if you look at most people, and I'm just going to be as generous as possible, most people are looking at, in the nostalgia poll, are looking at maybe like 50 of these cards that they really, really want. Um, and so you're looking at about one fourth of the cards you really want. So let's just say that you're pulling four quarter centuries from the nostalgia poll, which seems to be about reasonable. 
Um, you're pulling four of them. Only one of them is going to be what you want. So you spent a hundred dollars on a box. The boxes are going to be more expensive than a regular uh, standard Yu-Gi-Oh box, which is somewhere between sixty to seventy. We'll just cut that in the or sixty to eighty. We'll cut that in the middle. We'll call it seventy. So you are going to be spending more on the product, and you're most likely not going to get the cards you want. I think you should just go out and buy the Nostalgia Quarter Centuries or the Platinum Secret Rares that you want. That's how I would approach it because of how many there are. And your chances of getting these cards is the, or the cards that you want is pretty slim. And from what I've seen, most of the Nostalgia cards in here... Uh, most of the pulls are coming in at Platinum Secret, and you're getting somewhere around three to five quarter centuries. That's it. Five at the tops. Um, but I think more realistically, you're looking at like three quarter centuries per box. Well, if that's the case, it just makes sense that you would buy the cards that you're looking for. On the other set, the more um, meta-relevant cards where you're going to find Bonfire and Want It and SP Little Knight, um, there's a couple things on that side. First of all, if you didn't have the original print of this, there's a pretty good chance you picked them up in the tins and you don't necessarily need them. And if that's the case, then I certainly wouldn't be buying the sealed product. If you still need these cards, this is something that I think people are going to miss on this. Just go back to Rarity Collection 1 and Rarity Collection 2. How much were the secret rares in Rarity Collection 1 and Rarity Collection 2? Not the quarter centuries, just the secret rares. How much were they? They were super cheap. Super cheap. Like, really, really cheap. Um, and so going in and buying a box of this, it just seems crazy to me, even if you're searching for an SP, because in Secret Rare, SP Little Knight is going to be really cheap. I, you can take it and you can compare it to Baron before it was banned. So Baron, before it was banned in Secret Rare, was coming in somewhere around seven, eight, ten dollars $10, something like that. Well, that's that's pretty cheap. It's pretty cheap for Baron, and I would I would say that SP Little Knight is going to be the same. Now I know that there's going to be people out there that are going to say, "No way, SP Little Knight's never going to be under ten dollars." Yes, it will. Yes, it will. And you can pick it up in Super. You can pick it up in Ultra. You can pick it up in um, Ultimate. You can pick it up in Collector Rare, Secret. You're going to be able to pick this card up in all of these rarities. And they're going to be cheap. I sold these cards. I know what Baron was going for. And it was really cheap. You'll be able to pick up SP Little Knight really cheap. Just wait maybe like a week probably less, and you're going to be able to grab this card at under $10, you will. So I, if you're chasing those cards because you weren't able to get the original print, you weren't able to get the reprint in the tins, and now you're still chasing them, they're going to be a lot cheaper than what we imagine in our minds because what we imagine in our minds is, well, this is always a super expensive card. And yes, it was. But when you reprint the card in five, six, seven different rarities, it's going to destroy the value of the card. These cards are not going to retain anywhere near the value that I hear the community talking about. They're not. You just go back. Go back. Don't take my word for it. Go back and look at these cards in Rarity Collection 2 or Rarity Collection 1. And look and see how cheap they were, how cheap they are. You're going to be able to do the same thing in this set. So I would not be buying the sealed. I would not be buying the sealed if you're chasing certain cards. Now, if you want to open it up and have fun, 
certainly buy it. We're going to do it. We love opening up sealed product. We don't necessarily care about the money. I mean, we care about the money on large scale, but on small scale, like buying a box or two boxes, we don't really care. We do it for the fun and it's worth it to us. If that's you, then I'm saying by all means, buy the sealed and have a blast because you're going to have a ton of fun. But if you're opening this up, hoping to get the value that you put into it, hoping to get certain cards, you're probably going to want to pass on this and just buy the singles. That's my advice to you on whether you buy the sealed or buy the singles. Now, moving on from there, I'm talking about pre-sales just a little bit. And this is kind of like a primer for the pre-sale video that I'm going to do hopefully tomorrow. Um, but as far as pre-sales go, I get a lot of people that when we put that pre-sale video out, because we usually do it pretty late, um, we usually put it out after Gamer's Choice release their pre-sales. But I get tons of comments from people saying, you do know that pre-sales have been up forever and this video is basically worthless. I do know that pre-sales have been up for a little while. But I'm trying. I'm trying my best to give the community the benefit of the doubt. To give the community the benefit of the doubt that you all know that buying early pre-sales is almost always stupid. Do not buy these. Don't buy pre-sales until all the pre-salers get their listings up. Gamer's Choice, Tier Zero, Kong's Cards. There's a bunch of them on eBay like me and other people. Um, and so it's crazy to go in and buy the early pre-sales. It's questionable whether you should buy pre-sales at all. But if you're going to go in and buy the highest priced pre-sales, I don't know why you would do that. I, I, I'm, I'm going to take you over to eBay just to show you what I'm talking about. Because right now, Gamer's Choice does not have their pre-sales up. Tier Zero, as far as I know, do not have their pre-sales up. Kong's Cards does not have their pre-sales up. We do not have our pre-sales up. And most of the pre-sellers on eBay do not have their pre-sales up. But some people do. So let me take you over there and show you uh, exactly what, what it is that I'm talking about. All right, so you go over to eBay and this guy, I don't know this guy. I don't have anything against this guy. Um, he's running his business and he's running his business the best that he can. And he's making a ton of money. Um, so all props to Shampoo Gaming. All props in the world to Shampoo Gaming. But you're getting ripped off, man. <laughs> you're getting, you are getting taken to the cleaners on this. And if, if you're willing to do that, then, I, then by all means, he should be listing these. Um, this is Shampoo Gaming. He's had his pre-sales up for, I think, over a week. And you go in and you and you look at these and it's not like they're not selling. Like, okay, we can come up here to Bonfire and you can see Bonfire Ultra Rare, which is the cheapest. Super Rare is not the cheapest. Ultra Rare is the cheapest. One of the things that you find out when they do rarity collections is what people value more. And for whatever reason, People do not want ultra rares. That is the least valuable um, rarity in rarity collection. They buy the supers way before they buy the ultra rares. They buy the secrets, then they buy the supers, then they buy the ultras last. The cheapest that you're going to be able to get bonfire is $7. Now, he might have his supers less than that, but that would be... That would be dumb. He does. Um, he has them at $6. But $6 for a super rare bonfire? You're getting taken. And, and as long as you're willing to get taken, then all props to Shampoo Gaming. But this is nuts. Like, 
this is not a six dollar cart. You're you're paying like twenty dollars for a playset of this. You're going to be able to pick up a playset of this for under ten dollars. I I don't know why we're doing this. So people come at me all the time and say, you know, this video's too late. Pre-sales have already been up, but I'm trying to give you the benefit of the doubt that of course they're not buying their early pre-sales. This guy has absolutely no competition. He can price, price his pre-sales at any price that he wants. Now, when Gamer's Choice puts their pre-sales up, they're going to set the market of pre-sales. And this guy is going to be probably double the price of Gamer's Choice pre-sales. Probably more. So, when I, what I'm saying to you is, if you're... If you're somebody who buys pre-sales, that's fine. We sell pre-sales. I understand the desire to buy pre-sales. We also buy pre-sales sometimes, but not the early ones, not the ones where there's absolutely no competition. Those are those are way too expensive. You got you you got to be able to harness everything you got to control your spending until Gamers Choice and Tier Zero put their pre-sales up. Tier Zero in the UK, Gamers Choice in the United States, they set the bar for the price. Right now, there is no bar. This guy can set the prices at whatever he wants. And so, uh, just as a... Uh, just trying to help you think through this. Think through when you buy things. It's not like he's not saying he sold 13 of these. And when you get into the to the ultras, he's also sold 13 of them. And he's not he's not selling them to himself. He sold 13 secrets. Platinum sell 13 of everything? That can't be. That, that just can't be. Alright, I don't know what's going on with that. But the point is, is that he's selling these cards. People are going in and they're buying them. And it's not just Bonfire. You can go back and you can look at at other cards as well. Like, you just go down and you look at something like One for One. Like, he's selling One for One Ultra Rare for $350. you are going to be able to pick up this Ultra Rare for under a dollar. He's making $2.50 beyond what anybody else is going to make because people are willing to go in and buy these. Now, he's not sold a ton of these, but he sold three of them, which is three more than he should have. Um, secret rare, it must be that he sold three in any rarity. That's what it has to be. Um, so, it must be that in different rarities, he sold three one-for-ones. He sold 13 bonfires in different rarities. I think that's how it's working here. Um, but he's selling these. Don't go in and buy the early pre-sales. Gamer's Choice is probably going to have their pre-sales up. Probably later today, tomorrow. That's what you want to wait for. You wait for the, the, the official reveals. And then based on the official reveals, Gamers Choice and Tier Zero put their pre-sales up. And once they do that, that opens up the market for you to go in and start buying these. But to start buying these before the official release of the cards and the official reveal of the cards and the real big time pre-sellers, that's crazy. Don't do this. Please don't do this. Please don't throw your money away. Um, you, there's, there's easier ways to do this. Now, one thing that I do want you to know is that starting today, we're going to start listing our cards at Co2 Cards. It's not in an effort to scam people or to make as much money as possible. But th there's a lot of cards in this set. And I have to get them up. It's just me that lists these cards. So there's a lot of listings that are going on. So I've got to start getting them up. What I'm telling you right now is don't buy these until the official, re um, in until the official release 
uh, or reveals of the cards, which has already happened, and the big time pre sellers, Gamers Choice and Tier Zero, get theirs up. Uh, I'm going to talk to you on the next video of what you should buy and when you should be buying it. Don't forget about the giveaway one secret rare SP Little Knight and one um, totally awesome secret rare um, leave a comment subscribe to the channel and again my name is Todd from Kotu cards and I am out of here